Hi everyone. In this episode we're going to be working on the typewriter effect or the typing effect, but before we get to that I want to quickly address the UI scaling issue that I briefly touched on in the last episode. So first of all if we come down here and set that to free aspect or just anything that's smaller than 1920 by 1080 you'll immediately see a problem which is that the dialog box extends past the screen boundaries. Now there is an easy way to fix this. What I personally like doing is I like to go to the canvas here in the scene and go into the canvas scaler component and then set it to scale with screen size and then set the reference resolution to whatever my game's reference resolution is. This will depend on what type of game you're making. If it's pixel art it's likely much lower than 1920 by 1080 so you want to set it to that but I'm making here a, an HD game so I'll set it to 1920 by 1080 and as you can see the canvas here or the dialog box will have maintained its size and if I set it to something like 4k it's still good and if I go to full HD it's still the same so that's what I personally like to do to solve this issue However, it is very important to play around with it until it suits your game. Okay, let's get to work on the typewriter effect. So let's go ahead and create a new c -sharp script and we'll call it typewriter effect. Let's open it up in our text editor and let's get rid of the default unity methods. So this class will contain two methods, a driver method, which we'll call run, and also a coroutine, which is what will be responsible for drawing the text on screen. So we'll write private enumerator, type text. And this here will be responsible for typing the text and this will be responsible for running the coroutine. And we'll express that by typing start coroutine, type text. The driver method is going to take in a string called text to type, as well as a text message pro text so let's make sure we import text mesh pro and we'll type in tmp text text label so this is the string we want to type and this is the label we want to type it on the type text coroutine is going to take the exact same parameters so we'll just copy those down there and we'll give it the text to type and the text label now in the type text coroutine here we'll start off by creating a float t which is just the elapsed time since we've begun writing. Then we'll create an integer called character index, which we will also initialize to zero. This will basically just be a flawed value of t that we'll use to measure how many characters we want to type on screen at the given frame. Now in order to express that, we type while, and then character index is less than the text to type dot length and we want to wait one frame here, just like that. Then we want to increment t by time dot delta time, so that this becomes one after one second. Then we want to say that the character index is equal to mathf dot floor to int, and that is of course t. So basically what's happening here is this one is going to increment over time, and then this will store the flawed value of the timer here. So if this is 2.652, for example, this will just be 2, and if this is 5.9, this will just be 5. We want to make sure that this value is never any longer than the text to type, so we want to say character index is equal to mathf.clamp, and we want to clamp this value between 0 and the length of the text to type, just like that. Now what we want to do is actually write the text, so we say text label dot text is equal to, and that is the text to type, and we want to use the substring method, give it the starting index of zero, and how many characters do we want to type? Well, that's expressed in our char index variable. Right, then once we've completed this, we want to just make sure that the text label's text is equal to the text that we wanted to type to begin with. Okay. Now in order to test out that this works, we're going to pop into our dialog UI script. We're going to get rid of this text right here, and we're going to type get component typewriter effect, and we're going to call the run method and give it some text to write. So let's write in something like this is a bit of text, and then a new line, and then something like, I don't know, hello. And let's give it the text label as well. 
so we end up with this this little guy here. I just did the disclaimer. This is just a placeholder line. We'll just use it to ensure that the typewriter effect actually works. Let's head back into Unity, go to our canvas, and drag in the typewriter effect here. Then let's hit play, and hopefully we'll see that it does actually type very, very slowly. So let's give it a value so that we can control the speed at which it types. In order to do that, we'll head back into our text editor. We'll go to the typewriter effect. We'll create a new variable which we'll call private float typewriter speed. You can just call it writing speed or whatever you want. I'm going to set mine to 50 and I'm also going to make it a serialized field because then I can edit it inside of Unity. So then we'll take this value and then right here where we increment the time, we just want to multiply by the speed. Now going back into Unity, you'll notice we have this field down here where we can just set it to whatever we want. So it's a lot easier to play around with now. I'm going to set mine back to 50 and let's see that it works. So you'll see it types a lot quicker now. And just to give us a, a, a much clearer picture of the speed, we'll come back here and for the time being, we'll just say yield return new wait four seconds. And let's just wait two seconds before actually writing it just so that we can actually see it happening. So we're going to come back to Unity and hit play. And there it is. I accidentally put a space between the, <laughs> the new line and the hello, but obviously that's just easy to fix. You just want to get rid of this space right there. Okay, so that's our typewriter effect. One final thing I want to quickly address is the fact that it just kept saying new text three times in a row, even after we called the driver method. And to fix that, obviously that won't happen in the full game because it's going to start typing as soon as it appears. But for now, we'll just type something like text label text is equal to string dot empty. So going back into Unity, you see that it starts off completely blank before it starts typing. So that about does it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.